it's about this journey and this animating contest. And you see the wars breaking out, the famines, the dollar devaluation. The globalists are emerging, announcing their world government. They announced the United States of Europe with no sovereignty uh, yesterday. That was in the Financial Times of London. So it's all happening. David Icke, thank you so much for joining us from your TV studios there in London. I know you want to get into ISIS and the perfect model of problem, reaction, solution. But I want to do that in the next segment, the five minutes we've got. In fact, I'm going to skip this, this break so we have more time. I want you to break down where you think we are using a football analogy in the game. I, I'd say we were three or four goals behind, but now we've gotten three or four more goals, and we're neck and neck with a, with a quarter left here, and we've got the initiative, but the enemy is going to strike back. Where do you say we are in this magical time? Well, I think that um, this whole ISIS situation in uh, the Middle East is the start of a whole new stage from the point of view of the agenda. And there's no doubt that more and more people are beginning to see through the cover stories because in the end, it's a perception deception. It's all a perception deception. It's um, programming a perception of reality that suits the agenda for you to have. So in the Middle East at the moment, we've got um, a, a kind of great cocktail of perception deceptions. We've got the deception that this ISIS came out of nowhere, that it's um, come out organic and just appeared. Uh, and then we've got the perception deception that the ISIS uh, operation is uh, in, imposing upon its followers that it's some kind of uh, holy war jihad on behalf of um, Islam. And so you've got the perception deceived going on social media and, and urging people to become terrorists and join the jihad. Um, and they're just... Um, playing their part in destroying what they claim to be fighting for, i.e. that whole region of the Middle East and the religion of Islam. So it's a perception deception everywhere, the perception deception of um, climate change caused by human activity, which is just a, a scientific nonsense. And everywhere you see this, and if we, uh, I mean, the, the fork in the road, Alex, is what is your perception? What is the source of your perception? Are you having it downloaded by believing what the authorities in all their forms tell you, all the experts tell you? Or are you actually uh, taking your, your mind back, filtering the information, checking it out, looking at alternatives uh, in explaining that same situation, um, and then coming to your own conclusion? Because that's the difference. It's the difference between the free thinker who does not have a belief system to defend, does not, you know, have a belief system repelling all borders. I'm not, oh, I'm not listening to that because if that's anything like true, then my belief system must be wrong and that can't be true. So you have these belief system um, uh, people that just resist anything that challenges the belief system. And if you are going to break out of that program because it's 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 beliefs perceptions downloaded that exactly to the world that we live in if you're going to break out of that you've got to start to free think and 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 work it out for yourself i agree let me throw this at you i remember reading to paraphrase some quotes of joseph goebbels the nazi propaganda minister and and these are papers that later came out where he was writing to his propaganda corps and he said listen it needs to be simple. It needs to be dumbed down. We need to speak to people's laziness to yep. want to buy into our narrative. And the truth is 100% public that for four years almost now, they've been arming on the border with Iraq and Jordan and Turkey, Al-Qaeda groups out of Saudi Arabia and Qatar, uh, under different banners of Al-Qaeda. You can see it's the official Al-Qaeda flag of the Wahhabist. Their flags even say Osama bin Laden on a bunch of them. I've learned to read it like I know a Texas flag. It's them, the black flags of Al-Qaeda. And they have been given a base to try to take over Syria, kill all the Christians, 300,000 dead. And now they're flooding in. And our own government says, get rid of the prime minister. He hadn't played ball. We want to break the country in three. But we're, you know, we can't beat ISIS. Obama came out today and said, of course they can't beat them. Because with a deal in Saudi Arabia for taking the blame for 9-11, even though Iraq got attacked, 
they are now giving the Middle East to them, just like British intelligence set up Saudi Arabia to begin with and had them take over Syria. And this is setting up the Middle East under al-Qaeda. And then down the road, they'll probably even overthrow Saudi Arabia. That's being said now. And then we'll have a huge, giant war with that. I mean, it just goes on over and over again. It's all public. And as you said, though, uh, now Dianne Feinstein, Dick Cheney, all the usual suspects are saying, give your rights up. Terrorists are going to hit us any minute. Oh, we've got to stick our hands down your pants, David, while the U.S. border is now officially wide open. And they pay, the Border Patrol pays. They don't just let them in. They pay to ship them in to the interior. So it's all a giant hoax. And we've reached this point where they just don't care. What's happening, David? Well, you know, in this situation at the moment uh, in the Middle East with this ISIS, and of course ISIS, ISIS is is uh, one of the names for the, the, the goddess and the, the religion of this cabal. And if you notice, by by calling it ISIS, they have got news readers and news reporters to use their language, like ISIS forces have taken Mosul. ISIS forces are closing in on Baghdad. ISIS has done this. ISIS has done that. They must be, they must be laughing their socks and, 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 and of course, as you know, all these big events, uh, talk about the Olympics and symbolism, and, and literally they believe it gives their god power that is now being invoked as lesser magic. Yeah, I, I mean, symbolism is just an information field. You see, uh, the importance of, of, of symbolism is is in understanding the nature of reality. You know, I'm talking to you uh, now, um, and you're hearing words, but the words are not passing between me and you. A vibrational field of information uh, generated by the vocal cords is passing between me and people listening to me now. And then they decode that. And when they've decoded it, when the brain decodes it, then they can hear the words. They, they turn them into words. Now, symbols are information. They're information fields um, at their base level. And they are entering the, the perception, the mind, um, not through the ears like this, but through the eyes. And the vast overwhelming majority of information that we receive um, is through the, the, the sight sense. Now, unless it's kind of subliminally broadcast, when um, someone is saying something, at least it's conscious because you're hearing it. You are aware that some noise, some speech is taking place. But symbolism the uh, information fields of symbolism, they are entering through the eyes. And the, 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 it's a stunning figure. Um, the tiny amount of visual information that we actually register and see that gets to the brain compared with this tidal wave of visual information that's hitting the subconscious and registering at that level without us being consciously aware we're even seeing it. That's where subliminal advertising comes in and that's where subliminal symbolism comes in. So it's not just um, uh, putting symbols around for a bit of fun, they're actually um, subliminally downloading information. And um, what we um, have in the Middle East, which in this ISIS situation, which I think it's worth um, emphasizing, is the elephant in the living room called Israel. Now, Israel is, um, whenever there's anything going on in the Middle East, it, uh, people like Netanyahu and co are, are up there immediately, can't find a microphone quick enough, saying it's a threat to Israel. Oh my God, we need, we need help or we're gonna do this, it's a threat to Israel. Um, and what's been, <laughs> Uh, really, uh, you know, uh, a, a shouted silence, if you like, is that this time there is none of that. Now, if you're Israel, this sliver of land of less than um, 8 million people, um, and, and this um, ISIS group um, is, is over, uh, overrunning great trunk, uh, chunks of um, Iraq, uh, uh, threatening uh, to do the same in Jordan, they have um, an open uh, demand or ambition to take over Syria, Iraq, and what they call the Levant, which is, includes Israel. And chop the head, chop the head, and chop the... And, and chop the head off of the of the, of the king of Jordan. Yeah, I just I just this story uh, here. Netanyahu suggests 
uh, pinning ISIS against Iran. That's the headline. It's in the Jerusalem Post. But this is what he says. Israeli Prime Minister suggested the United States should largely stay out of the fight and instead allow the parties to weaken one another. Now, can you imagine in any other situations in the past uh, an Israeli prime minister saying that in the face of what's happening with with Israel as one of the stated targets of this ISIS organization? And, and then you've got uh, the American government that is um, not kind of being gung ho as they almost always are. Oh, yes, we've got to go in and, and, and stop this. Um, and it seems to me this, Alex, that what we're looking at is. A, uh, in the end, Western uh, US cabal uh, uh, dominated controlled operation in this ISIS with its billions of dollars in funding and of course, all the American weaponry that's it's inherited um, uh, from uh, taking over parts of um, Iraq and no doubt inherited in other ways as well. Benghazi. Uh, we, 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 we've, we've got this um, uh, situation where I think that they want this to kick off. They want it to kick on. They want this ISIS organization to get a bigger uh, uh, foothold in, in the, this, this region. Um, and then um, at the end of uh, it, when it really starts to move in Israel's direction, is to say, we must go in and protect Israel. Because, of course, they've all said, America not, not least, that um, they will protect Israel at all costs. And, and when you look at the um, Albert Pike scenario in the letter about, you know, playing the, the, the Muslims uh, world off against the, the political Zionists, as he called them, to create World War um, World War Three. Um, and, you know, you're starting to see a possible scenarios leading in that direction uh, because of what's happening here. The other thing, Alex, is Iran, because I've been writing in my books for years that the plan was to create a massive uh, rift and, and war, in effect, in the Muslim world between the Shia and the Sunnis. And here you have a situation where you've got the uh, allegedly, anyway, uh, Sunni um, ISIS uh, against the uh, Shia uh, dominated government in, uh, in Baghdad, in Iraq. And then you've got the center of the Shia world. 89% of Iranians are Shia. And so you've got this rather bizarre situation, Alex, recently, which I know people were going, what's going on here? When after castinating and condemning Iran all these years and saying we, we need to bomb them, take, take out these nuclear facilities, they now started, you know, kind of saying, well, maybe we ought to have some kind of um, discussion with them about what we do over this thing. And I think the answer to why is they want to draw Iran into this Shia um, Sunni conflict because once Iran's of involved course. in that, we'll never get out. No, no, that's and, it. And what you then got is this mass of interconnected conflict in that same part of the world. No, that's it. And look, here's the bottom line it is a Saudi Arabian, NATO, globalist backed giant army formed and trained in Turkey, Jordan, and Western Iraq. They were given bases, we reported on this three years ago, in Western Iraq, US forces trained them. It's a giant army with thousands of vehicles able to roll right in, and the Iraqi military was told to stand down. The US military didn't go in like the highway of death in 1991 in Kuwait, and take them out, and then now Obama says there's nothing we can do about it because this is an official launch to bare minimum break Iraq into multiple pieces. Iran may even be double dealing, and the Prime Minister of Iraq has said this, to get a third themselves. Uh, so Saudi Arabia gets a piece, this new state gets created out of the north uh, and the eastern uh, uh, or, or western area uh, with this uh, you know, ISIS group. And then that's a new area to stage attacks successfully and have plausible deniability that the West is involved into Syria. That's the larger plan. The issue is it's so naked, uh, the massacres they're committing, the evil they're involved in, and then they use them. Oh my gosh, ISIS, we better take your rights away. What do they do when there's terror attacks in America? And we come back, I want to ask you,
Why do you think Dick Cheney's saying, get ready for bigger 9-11? Obama's saying, look for mushroom clouds in Manhattan. Uh, same thing from Feinstein. I, what else do you expect them to pull in this new phase? Proxy wars in Ukraine, uh, dollar devaluation, food prices going up. What's the next big shoe to drop in David Icke's mind? Straight ahead, DavidIcke.com's his website. I'm Alex Jones, Infowars.com. We're on the march.